And, uh, and we're going to hear from you in just a moment, Ms. Doyer, and we are going to have to conduct some committee business for a moment, some more committee business based on the previous testimony we just heard. And y'all stay put. We're going to have questions for y'all if you'll give us just a couple of minutes uh, while we do this. And so uh, a lot of testimony this morning about outside uh, influences on Texas elections. And, and interestingly, from the left and the right, uh, we heard the very first witness say uh, these uh, big tech and other entities, it's not always a partisan bias, but it is a bias in favor of their candidate of choice. And it's hidden from the public, and it's illegal corporate contributions. A lot of good reasons. We heard a lot about what's happening, and we all had questions about what may be happening. And so this committee will recall that previously we have exercised our authority under the Senate rules and Texas law to issue subpoenas. We did this a couple of years ago with some uh, financial firms that were uh, – we had evidence and certainly confirmed were, were you know, doing some things they weren't supposed to be doing with some Texas funds, we believe, uh, money that belongs to the people of Texas. So I'm going to walk through that process for the committee. You'll recall – thank you – you'll recall that when we uh, – when the way we handled those subpoenas a couple of years ago – uh, because the committee rules and the Senate rules uh, require a vote of the committee, the committee voted to authorize those subpoenas. And then I made the commitment to the committee that before issuing subpoenas, we'll contact each of these entities, we'll visit with them, we'll be real nice, and we'll try to get the information we need, we'll give them a chance to comply, we'll send a request to them in writing, and we'll let them know in writing that if you do not comply with our request, then a subpoena will be coming. Last time when we did this, most of those entities complied without the necessity of issuing a subpoena. We had to issue only one subpoena to those four different entities. So my humble proposal that I've discussed with each of you individually is that we follow that process here. And so in a moment, there'll be a motion in writing offered by Senator Betancourt, and the clerk will read it to make sure we get it right. There'll be motion in writing that you have seen, and of course it's going to be open to the public, that will authorize subpoenas against those entities we heard about this morning. And I can certify, I can attest to you that the, uh, the, uh, the subpoenas would be on the subject matter of our interim charges. Those we heard today, we talked about, my goodness, we talked about some of the influences on children. So the subject of the subpoenas will be limited to our interim charges. That's what this is about. And so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to ask the clerk to read the motion writing, and then, of course, we'll discuss it and take all whatever we need to do before we vote. But I will. Uh, there's a following motion in writing, and I'll ask the clerk to read the motion in writing. I move that the State Affairs Committee of the Senate of the State of Texas, under the hand of the chair of the committee, and as the chair deems appropriate, in accordance with Senate Rule 11.20, Issue one or more subpoenas to compel Alphabet Inc., Meta Platforms Inc., TikTok, PTE Limited, X Corp., or any other relevant company or entity, including any subsidiary or affiliate of one of those companies or entities, as well as any officer, employee, agent, or representative of one of those companies or entities, or of a subsidiary or affiliate of one of those companies or entities, to appear before the committee at a time and location specified in the subpoena produce for the inspection of the committee those books, records, documents, and other evidence specified in the subpoena in a manner specified in the subpoena that are in the recipient's possession, custody, or control, or both appear before the committee to testify and produce books, records, documents, and other evidence as provided by the subpoena. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That's the motion. And uh, Senator Bettencourt, as a movement, of course, we can have any discussion and questions about that before we vote. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody got questions or concerns, I'll let Senator Bettencourt, and I'll be happy to talk about it since I'm the one that's asking you all to do it. Madam uh, Dean, thank, you're recognized. Thank you. Will the books and records, et cetera, produced be available to all the members of the committee? Dean Zafferini, that's very important. This, the answer is yes, and let me expound on that briefly. By this motion, the chair, pursuant to Senate rules and Texas, the, the committee, pursuant to Senate rules and Texas law, would authorize the chair to issue subpoenas Whatever we get from those subpoenas is not for the chair, it is for the committee. So yes, ma'am, everything we get, just like last time, is for the whole committee and will be available to the entire committee. And Mr. Chairman, if I could speak Senator about Bettencourt. last time, I think in my experience was this was a very important step because as the, as the chairman already indicated, three out of the four companies complied just by, uh, by written request. Uh, and this was only used with one company, but that information was, was enlightening 
uh, to what we're looking at. And I think we've got areas here uh, that relate to the charges that are specific for the committee. Uh, but, you know, as more testimony comes in, like the monitoring issue that we heard today, uh, this is the type of information that we'll need to be able to construct a monitoring bill of, uh, because that would appear to be what the one of the things that's coming out of the uh, out of this testimony. I can't speak for the committee, can't speak for the chairman, but I can speak for myself, uh, and that's why I, I wish to uh, to uh, make the motion to authorize these subpoenas. Thank you. Members, any questions at all? We don't want to rush this process. It's not something we do every day, but we do take it seriously. And and as the committee knows, whatever evidence we did, we we uncover will be shared with the committee. And as a committee, we'll follow the evidence wherever it takes us, whatever we find. And uh, this is about sunshine and about uh, streetlights. Uh, this is this is what we do around here, and it's great for us to be able to come together and do this. So. If there are no questions on Senator Betancourt's motion, we'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Betancourt? Aye. Birdwell? Aye. Lamantia? Aye. Menendez? Aye. Middleton? Aye. Parker? Aye. Perry? Aye. Schwartner? Aye. Zaffarini? Aye. Paxton? Aye. Hughes? Yes. There being 11 ayes and no nays, the vote is unanimous. Uh, I thank you to the members. We will take your trust seriously and work with you and alongside you and, and your teams and all the people we represent to get this done right. So thank you very much. I thank the witnesses and folks here for letting us pause to do that because sending subpoenas is a big deal. A two-thirds vote is required. And so when we have the committee together, we have to take advantage of that, having heard the evidence this morning. So I thank you each and thank you for your testimony, Ms. Beasel.